does inflation hit you? It, it hit me hard. It's hitting me hard. What do you blame for it? I blame the federal government at this point. If a working class mom who works as a paralegal cannot buy a $2 bell pepper because it's now five, imagine a mother living on food stamps. Yeah. Imagine a mother who's making minimum wage trying to feed children. Yeah. They're killing us without killing us. If you, if you understand that, they're killing us without telling us they're killing us. They're hurting people in ways that they can't help themselves. It's either feed my child or, well, how about feed my children? And I don't, but I have to go work. A few moments later. Consumer price index headline number coming in as expected, up two tenths of a percent. Up two tenths of a percent on headline number follows yet unrevised down one tenth. So we went from basically the weakest, the biggest negative uh, month over month change, uh, the a positive in CPI since COVID for 20, for 2020. And now we're at a level that we haven't seen really since April. We're up at three tenths. If you look at X Food and Energy, exactly as expected as well, up two tenths. The issue is, of course, it's following one tenth, which just like the last number was comping towards the first several months of COVID. Real average weekly earnings uh, for the month of July actually down 0.2%. Energy prices unchanged. Food prices jumping 0.2%. Uh, and then if you get into a couple of other things here, uh, housing still a little sticky there, up 0.4%. And I'm giving you month over month numbers just to be clear. So it looks like that consumer price index isn't quite translated to the average working American. Welcome, Warriors. Thank you so much. It's me, Linda B. So today we're talking about this so-called upward swing in the economy in the 12th hour by the demon rats. Yes, they're saying that things are looking up. The economy is going in the right direction. Inflation is going down. It's not as bad as it used to be. Problem is, it's three and a half years later. And what about the previous three and a half years? We're going to look into this video and we're going to compare the different news outlets and how it actually affects average working Americans because you can say whatever you want about the trends going in the right direction, CPI, the economy, everything is looking up. But at the end of the day, how much are people paying for groceries? Are they saving money? How much are they putting in their gas tank? And that's costing them way more than it used to. And the choices that they have to make, whether or not to buy medicine or food. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's get into it. Price index huh. rose uh, 0.2% last month in line with expectations. Actually a little better than expectations. That pushed the inflation rate down to 2.9%. And Willie, that's the first time the inflation Ooh. rate has been below uh, 3%. Um since 2021, uh, and uh, the Wall Street Journal reporting and breaking news that uh, it, it, it pretty much seals the deal uh, when it comes to uh, a rate cut, an interest rate cut, yeah. when the Fed meets September 17th and 18th. Yeah, we're going to have Andrew Ross Sorkin join us in just a moment to walk through some of the numbers. But this is really good news. This July inflation report, 2.9 percent inflation year over year. As you said, that's the lowest since March of 2021. Prices are down, importantly, for food. Those have been nagging people at grocery stores for years now and energy still higher than anyone would like them to be. But they're headed in the right direction. Uh, this is great news. Take politics out of it. This is great news. For the country. This is great news for people who need to go out and buy things for their families. So uh, a great report here. Obviously, this, there's some politics at play here, John. This has been the issue. The one issue in the economy, despite so much good news about our economy as we make our way out of the, mm -hmm. this COVID era that has been nagging. And it looks like from this July report anyway, we are definitely headed in the right direction. Taking politics out of it, good for America. Putting politics in it, Good for Vice President Harris. I'm obviously the common man on the panel. There's two things that come into my mind. One, does this mean olive oil that I went to the store to buy the other day is not going to cost $20 for a container? <laughs> I mean, it's olive oil. This is supposed to be like $5. And I mentioned this earlier. Is my electricity bill? I Granted, I'm in Connecticut. We have sort of extenuating circumstances this past month. But $620? Wow. For electricity this past month? 
That's I, horrible. So, I mean, you, this is what the air conditioner on all yeah, the time. It wasn't on all the time. That's the issue. And so the underlying concern is when are these things going to go down? Because, yeah, obviously all the, the, the PPI, CPI, that all yeah. matters to the investor. Yep. That matters to the institutional investor. But to the common man and woman who's watching this program who wants to know, hey, am I going to have any money to save in the month of August, the yeah. month of September? That's what matters. And to your point, there's no specific, there's no movement in here that gives the consumer any sort of relief. That's exactly right. We, you know, we don't care about CPI. At the end of the day, am I still going to have to pay $12 or $15 or $20 for olive oil where it used to be $6 and $7? Am I still going to have to pay, you know, $8 for a bell pepper when it used to be $3? Am I still going to be paying $400 to $600 a month for my power bill when it used to be $150 to $200? That's my question. Don't give me these green arrows and red arrows, CPI and NASDAQ and all this kind of stuff. That makes me no never mind. okay? Everyday working people want to know, okay, am I now able to save money? Or is what you're telling me going to translate into dollars and cents in my checking account? where I can actually see it and I can actually feel it because telling me one thing and I'm feeling and seeing and hearing another doesn't make me any, that doesn't help me. That doesn't help anybody. And they can say what they want to. That's a bunch of BS because when I go to the grocery store, I'm still carrying a basket with hardly anything in it and I'm paying around a hundred dollars for it. That's what's happening. When I used to be able to fill up a large cart and pay $100 for groceries, that's not translating. What they're telling me is not translating. And it also depends on the news that you watch. You just saw these two different clips. I mean, it's like we're living in alternative universes, okay? Whether you watch NBC or Fox, they're saying two totally different things. And I'm looking at the Fox guy who's saying things that actually register. Does that mean I pay less for my food? Does that mean I pay less for gas? That's what matters. And right now, I want to get into this other clip. This is fire. This is, I believe, CNN talking with Congressman Congressman Byron Donalds out of Florida, and he is schooling her on Kamala Harris. ...with what John and Julia Chatterley were just talking about. The CPI just out this morning. This is the first time that overall inflation measured on year over year basis has come in below 3% since March of 2021. A trend that you could say would would be good for the Harris campaign, maybe fueling the Fed to begin to cut interest rates in the fall. What's your reaction to it? My reaction to it is, is that Kamala Harris's administration with Joe Biden crippled families across our entire country. There was a video of a, of a black woman being interviewed, I think by MSNBC, talking about how prices have gone up massively. A bell pepper that was $2 is now $5. And she was able to get through it. But what about a single mom with two kids, three kids doing everything to make ends meet? Well, the reason why those prices have been massively expensive is because Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote on Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan in 2021. She was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act. All that did was create massive government spending, which created massive inflation on the backs of the American people. Overall, prices are up well over 20%, especially when you start getting into food and other areas like that. So Kamala Harris's record has been one of leaving working families behind. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a massive inflation. Our economy was growing massively at the same time. Working families were getting ahead. Middle-income families getting ahead. Everybody was thriving. I think so the key issue is what was just brought up about which candidate is the candidate of political and economic change. It's without question that candidate's Donald J. Trump because Kamala Harris was sitting there shotgun with Joe Biden creating one of the worst economic situations for working families in the last 40 years in the United States of America. Whoa, that's saying a lot because they're trying to make it seem like a big deal. Oh, the inflation is at its lowest point since March, 2021. Oh, so at the end of the day, prices are still high. At the end of the day, the current person, the current vice president under this horrible administration, who's now running for president, had the tie-breaking vote 
in the Inflation Reduction Act and the America Rescue Plan? How is that some kind of a rescue? If that's a rescue, just leave me alone because I don't need that kind of rescuing. She is responsible for the situation. And now she's saying, we're going to do something. You've had three and a half years to do something and nothing has been done. The fact that people are actually out here saying I'm with her is mind boggling. And I know what it is. They're being misinformed by the media. They're, I guess they're not paying attention to what is actually going on in their lives. What is their power bill actually saying? I live in Georgia. We have Georgia power. Our power bill is extremely high, extremely high. It's high in the summer anyway, but I think it's never been this high. Food prices are still extremely high. So they can say these numbers, but does that translate into everyday life? And the slap in the face, I think the Democrats think we're stupid. They think we're stupid. They think we don't actually see and hear what's actually going on. We're supposed to just believe them and just deny our eyes? The idea of change, though, is all about perception, right? I mean, it could be change from now or change from Trump or change from, you know, left to right and where I was just yesterday. So change is a, percep is, is a perception that is, up, that is in the eye of the voter. And what Harry Enten was getting at on the issue of age is that in the analysis, you can see that it's flipped for Donald Trump, that now more voters are seeing him as too old to be president compared to what voters thought back in May. This was a Democratic problem. Is this now a Republican problem? Well, first of all, um, with the polling that you're talking about, I'm not totally surprised because if you look at Kamala Harris over the last 24 days, what have we seen? She won't answer questions. She won't talk to your that network to or any other question, network. She has no specific question. policy. No, no, but this does matter. It does matter. And let me explain. If she won't answer questions, hard-hitting questions about her record and what she's going to do, not the fluff about joy and moving forward and freedom, we're talking about the real political and policy issues that are going to affect the American people, she's nowhere to be seen. She will not answer questions. She has not talked to the American people on but her you own think, website. You think if, there are you no think policies. When, but when you think, so you it's think easy when she to answers run as if you're a Hollywood are, starlet, but we're running for president. But you think when she is, sits for interviews, lays out policy, you think that's going to lead with more people thinking she is too old to be president? I'm trying to follow the line here. No, it's not about her age. It's about her ability and her competency to lead our country going forward. What's going to be her economic agenda? Is that going to be different from Joe Biden? I don't think so, because Susan Rice is on the record now saying that Kamala Harris was integral in the Joe Biden Kamala Harris agenda. I just laid out for you that she voted and she broke the ties in the Senate to push Joe Biden's economic agenda. So she has to answer for that. What is she going to say? Oh, I just want to move forward. And let's go back to another one. When she ran for president in 2020, when she was in the United States Senate, she supported the massive Green New Deal. She supported Medicare for All, a co-sponsor. She ran on that in 2020. Now she's trying to throw out staffers to run away from that. So what I am saying is not about age, about being a, a candidate for political and economic change to help our country thrive. Whether you're black or white, rich or poor, middle income, it doesn't matter. That person's Donald J. Trump. It is not Kamala Harris. And that my, is my point Kamala was, Harris I was asking about age, which is why I was, which I was, and you, you've brought up her not answering questions. You've also called her not competent. And, and I, on that, Nikki Haley has some advice for, well, her advice was for Donald Trump, but I guess it would apply to all Republicans, including yourself, her speaking on Fox and how you guys talk about Kamala Harris. Let me play this from Nikki Haley. Quit whining about her. The campaign is not going to win talking about crowd sizes. It's not going to win talking about what race Kamala Harris is. It's not going to win talking about whether she's dumb. It's not. You can't win on those things. The American people are smart. Treat them like they're smart. And she also said it's not going to win talking about how she's not answering questions. Do you? Well, I agree that we won't probably win on that. We're going to win by, by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. But Donald Trump does talk about what he's going to do in addition to things that probably don't even matter. It's not like he's 
only talking about the fact that Kamala Harris is incompetent. He's not only bringing up things that she herself identified one way as her ethnicity and now as another way. She was brought up to use Black as a way of getting in to politics. Her mother taught her that from the reports I've seen. So he does bring up policy because if he didn't, how come a lot of people bring it up? How come I know about it? Why is it that I know? I mean, I know he wants to drill, baby drill, as he says, which will bring down energy costs and make our gas prices lower. It will make everything lower because food is delivered on trucks and ships and products are on trains and they use fuel. And so when the fuel is less expensive, everything else goes down as a result. So yeah, he does bring up what he's going to do in addition to an Iron Dome that he wants to use for protection, taking the immigrants back where they come from, you know, whatever, wherever they come from, this mass deportation. And because they're actually bringing crime and other issues across the border, and they're not just coming from Mexico, it's all over the world. And all of that will ultimately help Americans as well, because they're competing for jobs and they're being paid less money. So Donald Trump has laid out what he's going to do over and over again. Yes, there are some sidebars with some comments about Kamala Harris and how incompetent she is. But my question is, did he lie? Because if she signed off on the Reduction Act and America Rescue Plan, which is the very reason why we're in the situation that we're in, she has discredited herself as a candidate. She is null and void. She is not credible. She should not be listened to. Period. You agree? Well, look, I, like I said in this entire interview, I've not talked about Kamala Harris's crowd sizes or anything like that. You, talk, I am you, you talking said about that, her competency. Congressman, you said, yeah, you said her Hold competency, on, and you said clear, that she's because not because doing interviews, and those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said. Is, One second. This was, those are two of the things that Nikki Haley said you guys should not be talking about because it's not going to win you voters. What do you say to Nikki Haley? Well, first of all, what I'm talking about is about her competency to lead our country. And competency is based upon decision making and policies that you support. That's what it's always based upon. And if you look at her record in the U.S. Senate, if you look at the fact that she was there as a partner with Joe Biden leading to one of the great economic collapses for working families in our country. Because when you have massive weight, massive um, 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 inflation, when wages are down adjusted for inflation, when people are having to make uh, decisions between the light bill and food or housing and other things, that's a catastrophe for working families. It's devastating to middle-income Americans. Kamala Harris, that is her record. And so all I'm saying is, is that, yes, she has to answer for her record if she's going to choose to answer any questions at all. Right now, she's choosing not to answer questions. It is being done on purpose, because when you examine her record, it demonstrates that her record would lead us to truly believe that she doesn't have the competency to lead the United States of America going forward. We That's know perfect. that Donald Trump has the competency to do so because he's already done. He disagrees with Nikki Haley. And, you know, I'm not a total fan of Nikki Haley. I mean, she endorses Trump, but she's not a true, true MAGA Republican, not in any sense of the word to me. And the fact that we are looking at, yes, Donald Trump is a lot older than Kamala Harris. He's got her by what? How, you know, 18 years. Yes, 18 years. She'll be 60 this year and he's 78. And we're not talking about age in and of itself. We're talking about competency. You can be incompetent at any age and you can be competent at any age. So it's not a matter of that. It's a matter of a proven track record. And the fact that this woman is not even answering questions, she's been spewing things like, we're going to move forward. And Donald Trump is going to do this. Donald Trump is going to do that. He's going to help the rich. Everything that comes out of her mouth is not true. He is looking at the working class people. And that's who he helped when he was in turn the first time. I mean, remember those stimulus checks? If you made under $400,000 annually, you received a stimulus check. And for each child. That's what he was about. The economy was thriving. Gas was under $2 a gallon. Food was affordable. Everything was much better. And I remember those low interest rates. Hate that I didn't take advantage of them back then. But that's the kind of economy we can compare to what he did to what 
Harris has agreed to do, and she was the deciding vote on both of those disastrous policies. It was her. So she has a proven failed record. Donald J. Trump has a proven successful record. It's a no-brainer. If anyone is out here thinking about voting for Kamala Harris, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, so with everything that's going down in this election, we have to vote smart. We really have to vote smart. And another thing that I want to bring up too <laughs> is this whole thing with Donald J. Trump, who's been saying for weeks and weeks that he was going to have no tax on tips. And what does Kamala Harris do? She says, no tax on tips. She got that from Donald Trump. She can't even come up with her own slogan, her own ideas. She can't even do that. She was the one that signed something. She was the breaking tie when it came to making sure that tip workers got taxed. So now she's going to backtrack on tax on tips. And she's the reason that there are tax on tips in the first place. Go back and check this. OK, go back and check it. Now, I'll say it and I'll say it again. And this is very, you know, probably condescending to people who vote Democrat. But most Democrats are low information, misinformed voters. They don't seemingly know things. If I bring up that she was the a tie breaking vote for the Inflation Reduction Act in America, save the uh, Save America policy. They're like, I'm, I don't care. He's this and he's that. Because the job of the media is to make Donald J. Trump look so bad that it doesn't matter what the Kamala Harris administration didn't do, that they make him look so bad that they look like the lesser of two evils. When in actuality, they're the reason why we are suffering right now. You all tell me what you all think about all of this, the whole competency thing. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, be blessed. See you all next time and march on warriors.